I want to show you how I enhance fog in my landscape images using just a bunch of basic Lightroom adjustments. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So this will be our base image on which we want to enhance that fog. And we can do quite a lot of things already in the basic adjustments panel. So whenever we are dealing with fog in our images, fog will lessen the contrast the further you go back in the image. So you can see right here in the front, we do have some nice rich contrast, but going further back following these paths, you can see the image has less and less contrast. Knowing this, we can now further improve that. So. The first thing I want to do is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. And this already helps reducing the overall contrast by making the darkest parts of the image brighter. Then what I want to do as well is to make this whole shot a lot brighter by bringing up the exposure. So let's do that. Right around here we do have some nice details in the shadows which is exactly what I want but I think the highlights are way too bright and therefore I'm going to bring down the highlights. This will reveal more details, especially in the brightest parts of the image. So right around here, we can now actually see some leaves and tree branches. Of course, reducing the highlights also helps reducing the overall contrast. And in turn, we will make the fogginess of this scene more intense. What we can do as well is to bring up the shadows. So let's raise them very, very gently. And while we're at it, we can also increase the blacks. Raising the shadows and raising the blacks helps reducing the overall contrast. And you can immediately see an improvement when it comes to the fogginess of this image. I can also show you the before and after comparison real quick. Instantly, you can see we have improved this image quite a lot by only reducing the overall contrast of the scene using basic Lightroom adjustments. Of course, we can continue. Don't want to lose too much contrast. So what I'm going to do next is to introduce some whites. I'm paying close attention to this program because I don't want to overexpose too badly, but I do want to make this shot quite noticeably brighter. So right around here looks good. I'm going to hold on the Alt key to see where the overexposure is kicking in. And I think these areas are not that important to the overall look of this image. So I'm going to keep that little bit of overexposure that's in these areas. All right, looking good so far. Now, before I continue working on the atmosphere, I want to work on the white balance, which I want to make slightly warmer to emphasize these nice autumn tones we have in this image. So right around here, that's the point where I'm happy with it. What we can do as well to improve the fogginess of this scene is to use the presence settings. So clarity and dehaze mainly, I am going to add a bit of, of texture, which will sharpen the image. But at the same time, I'm going to drop the clarity, which will make everything quite a bit softer. And again, dealing with fog, everything will become more softer naturally. So bringing down the clarity just makes this effect stronger. And of course we can also use the dehaze slider, but we're not going to raise it because we don't want to reduce the haziness of the image. We're going to use negative dehaze to make the fog stronger. Just be careful to not overdo it because that is easily done with the dehaze slider. Also keep in mind, if you're using negative dehaze, this will make the whole image brighter. So while playing around with that, you might want to check out the histogram just to be safe. All right, and while we're down here, let's also bring up the vibrance. I want to have some more colors in this image. Just around here looks fine to me. Okay, and as you can see, after just a bunch of basic adjustments, the image looks much, much better. We do have a lot more haze in the atmosphere. And of course, we can improve things further by targeting certain areas of the shot. And as always, we're going to be doing that with a bit of masking. So let's open up the masking panel. Right away, I do want to add more contrast to the shot in areas where it actually makes sense to have more contrast. So that would be in the foreground. Let me use a linear gradient for that. And I, I will be covering pretty much the foreground like this coming in from the left side and all i'm doing here is to bring down the exposure very gently giving the foreground more punch this way 
Of course, we can not only change the left side, but we can use another linear gradient for the right side as well. The reason I'm using two different linear gradients is because I'm applying different amounts of exposure adjustments. In this case, on the right side, I'm going to lower the exposure a little more. So let's bring it down right around here. Looks good to me. Now adding these two masks to the image not only helps to add more contrast, but it will also help a lead viewer's eyes a little more through the image by making the rather uninteresting foreground right here a little less important. What we can do as well is I'm going to add a linear gradient for the very top covering this area. And I can add a little bit of contrast to the top of the image by bringing down the blacks. And as we bring down the blacks, this will make all these very dark tree branches a little more visible without affecting the midtones and the highlights of the top part. So we're basically keeping the haziness in this top area, but we are adding punch by making the darkest parts of the image just a slight bit darker. I can also deactivate this mask real quick to see the difference from before to after. Much better. So we have introduced quite a bit of contrast to this image. Now I want to do the opposite. And for that, I'm going to use a radial gradient. Let me cover one of the brightest parts of the image like this. And what I want to do in here is to further bring up the blacks. I'm also going to increase the whites for more brightness. And I'm going to slightly bring down the dehaze. So what we did with this radial gradient is to further reduce contrast in one of the brightest parts of the image where we can actually see a little further into the distance where there is supposed to be more fog. We can do the same on the other side. I'm going to use another radial gradient for that, covering the brightest part on the other side right here. I'm always overlapping some of these darker areas to have some kind of light bloom effect where the light spills over the darkest areas, which I think just looks really, really nice. So what I'm doing in here is to further bring up the blacks again. Let's bring up the whites and let's drop the dehaze again. Once more, I'm going to deactivate this mask so you can see the difference from before to after. That looks wonderful. I do think I want to stack another set of radial gradients on top. So let me create one more radial gradient for the right side. I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. I'm also going to add another radial gradient right away on the other side. Again, I'm making it bigger for a more natural effect. And all I'm going to do in here is to further bring up the blacks very, very gently. Right around here looks very good to me. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me deactivate all the masks so we can see the difference from our base image to the image with the masks applied. And now you can nicely see where we have added some extra contrast and where we have added some more fogginess. Now we can also focus on the colors a little bit, but I don't think there's much going on. I want to start in the color mixer. I mainly want to work on the saturation, bringing out some of these autumn tones. So I'm going to increase the yellow tones first, but I'm only going to bring them up a little bit. And I'm also going to increase the green saturation some more. Then let me go down into the calibration tab. As always for my images, I'm just bringing down the blue primary hue a notch. And let's raise the saturation. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the colors. So now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. Let's do this really quick. And I'm always using the same settings for radius and detail. I'm bringing the radius all the way down while increasing the details all the way up. Then I want to apply some masking. In this case, there's so much going on in this image that the masking won't be that effective. You can see that when I'm holding down the Alt key and I'm adjusting the masking slider, there's still pretty much the whole image affected by the sharpening. But that doesn't matter. I still want to bring up the amount of sharpening very slightly like this. But there we have it. This is the finished image. And as you can see, we have very nicely enhanced that fogginess of the scene by simply lowering the contrast and using some targeted adjustments, further lowering contrast or adding some extra contrast 
to areas where it makes sense. So let me know what you think about this approach. If you have any questions left, of course, feel free to write a comment as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.